We are used to we are all used to the genre of election postmortems, particularly in elections where Democrats feel they should have won or that they worry they won by margins that were too narrow. Most recently, remember, uh, this happened after the 2020 presidential election. Joe Biden won. OK, the entire universe of discourse for weeks was what did Dems do wrong? Why did they lose all those House seats? Why was it so close? It shouldn't have been so close. Lots of hang wringing, even after defeating an incumbent president, which is hard to do. But because uh, Republicans are caught in the throes of this Trump cult and the big lie, you just never see any of that from them. I mean, this week we saw an enormous failure by the Republican Party in the recall election of the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. The party was completely repudiated in a very high turnout election by voters in the biggest state in the union. And it was just just an embarrassing belly flop. I mean, it was like called an hour after polls closed. And since they are not going to do the postmortem, we feel duty bound to do it for them. Here with me now, Ron Nering. He's a Republican strategist, former chair of the California Republican Party. In this recall election, he was advising Kevin Falconer, a moderate Republican candidate, to replace Governor Newsom, who, yes, you are not misreading that statistic there, got under 9% of the vote in the recall. Ron, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, so what's your postmortem if you got to go in and, and, and give your PowerPoint about what went wrong here? Yeah, I think there are four things that you cannot do in a recall election. The first is don't polarize the electorate when you're in the minority. Second, don't allow the alternative to become the issue. Number three, don't activate your opponent's base except on purpose. Uh, and number four, don't suppress your own vote. And I think those are four things that we saw occur during the course of the campaign, which, of course, the yes on recall side became represented by Larry Elder. And all of those mistakes uh, were made. And so I think it's important to recognize that, you know, success is a poor, uh, poor teacher, but failure is a much better teacher. And it's important to learn these lessons as we go forward about how you win in a state where Republicans are outnumbered by two to one. It's not by polarizing the electorate. It's not only by playing to your base, but you have to build a diverse coalition of people, starting with your own base, but then going deep into independence and those Democrats, reaching them on issues instead of bipartisan affiliation in order to build a majority in order to win. Right. Gavin Newsom never, Gavin, just one more thing. Gavin Newsom never became more popular throughout the entire campaign. And we have the polling data to show that. He never came more, became more popular. But as Larry Elder became the issue, the yes on recall side started to slide and you got the result that we had. Right. But the, but here's the thing. So the recall setup, I think, is preposterous. Just to be clear, like the notion that Gavin Newsom could have gotten 49 percent of the vote and been replaced by someone who got 28 percent of the vote is nuts. Right. Like I, I and, and let me just say this, because the reason it applies is most elections aren't recall elections. Most elections are choices. They're choices between two candidates. They're not thumbs up or thumbs down. And so to your point of, well, it changed when it became a choice between Gavin Newsom or Larry Elder. Like that's because Larry Elder was going to be the guy who became governor of California if the recall went through. Like, people were correct to view it as a choice between those two things because Larry Elder would be the governor of California, and voters did not want that. Yeah, it's a common misconception in, uh, in political circles that question one drives question two. That is, yes or no on recall drives the choice for the replacement. It's actually the opposite way yes, around. Yes, exactly. I, and I, yeah, so in 03... Arnold Schwarzenegger was an acceptable alternative to a majority of California voters. And that's why yes. the recall passed. So you have to win question two Correct. with someone who's an acceptable alternative first. And that's very, very clear, particularly in a state where Democrats outnumber Republicans by two to one. But here's the problem for the Republican Party as I see it. Like, I agree with you that Elder was bad news for the cause, right? The problem is what Republican voters want is Larry Elder and not Kevin Falconer. Like, you you seem like a pretty good political consultant, as far as I can tell. Kevin Falconer seems like a perfectly decent politician. He certainly has a resume that seems like plausible Republican governor of California, if you're going to elect someone who's a Republican. And he got 8% of the vote because the people that came out, they don't want Kevin Falconer. They got no interest in Kevin Falconer. They want Larry Elder. That's who Republicans want. And I'm looking at the numbers by overwhelming margins. Like, Unless you could do something about that, I'm not sure what you can do about Republicans in a state like California. Yeah, you know, so there's a number of factors that are unique to the recall election process that, that worked against us. One of which is that it was so short and it was and it was made even shorter. Right. Gavin Newsom signed a law 
that allowed the election to be moved up into September rather than November. That was for political purposes. Uh, but ultimately, having such a short election cycle gave really gave an opportunity to someone to come in who had a large base of pre-existing name ID, particularly in the biggest market in the state in Los Angeles. That was Larry Elder. He had never been vetted. Uh, and he wound up being vetted just as people were making their decision about who to vote for. And then all of these things come out, like, you know, saying strange things about discriminating against women in the workforce, legalizing narcotics, all these other strange things, you know, come uh, come about at that point in time. So this was a very short election cycle. When Kevin Faulkner got in, it was to run in 2022. So he got in almost two years before Election Day. But that turned into a sprint with but, this recall. And that created a condition okay. to favor a candidate like a Larry Elder. But, you know, look, you work in Republican politics. I do. Uh, which, you know, uh, I'm glad better, better you than me. Uh, in a primary between Kevin Falconer and Larry Elder among Republican primary voters, Kevin Falconer loses. Like he like your party doesn't want your dude. They don't. They don't. That's not what they're interested in. That's not what sells. Like, I'm just telling you, man, it's 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 plain as day. Like there could be sure it could have been longer. He could have been vetted. It's not what the Republican base wants. They want the Larry Elders of the world. Well, look, we, we have to have a conversation within the Republican Party about whether or not we want to win or whether or not we just want to have arguments. And there's a model out there in states like Maryland, Massachusetts and Vermont, all three states, East Coast states, heavily yep. Democratic. Yep. In Massachusetts, Democrats outnumber Republicans by three to one. Yep. Maryland is overwhelmingly Democratic, run by Baltimore and then the Washington, D.C. suburbs. And yet Larry Hogan and Charlie Baker, the governor of Massachusetts, are consistently not only Republican governors in Democratic states, but they're among the most popular governors in America. We have a Republican governor in Bernie Sanders' own state of Vermont. So it can be done. But we have to have a conversation about what it really takes in order to win in the state that we live in, not the state of 1970, not the state which Ronald Reagan won uh, for governor, uh, but the state of California as it is today, which has an enormous suburban population, which is where the Republican brand, national Republican brand, has really taken a beating, and a large Latino population. And unless you have a candidate who is going to win the suburbs and do very competitively in the Latino community, we will not win a head-to-head -head race in California until that happens. I agree with that. I, there's also, you mentioned voter suppression on your own, suppressing your own vote, and I, I think this is what there's reference to. Now, I will say that Elder conceded, to his credit, um, but, you know, you had him talking about shenanigans. There was all this nonsense, the, the, the ex president's spokesperson tweeting out about how, you know, after it's called two to one, like, obviously it was a whooping. There was no like shenanigans that cause this outcome. You have the ex president's uh, person tweeting about this elder. Uh, this is elder on Monday appealed on Monday to his supporters to use an online forum to report fraud, which claimed it had detected fraud in the results of the California recall election, resulting in Governor Gavin Newsom being reinstated as governor on Monday when the link was live on Elder's campaign site. The election hadn't happened yet. No results had been released. I mean, I guess the idea here, and I think that um, Ronna McDaniel thought this in Georgia, is that if you tell people it's going to be rigged, not the greatest motivator for them to go out and vote. No. No, absolutely not. This is the greatest self own in 20 years of California politics that I've ever seen in that Larry Elder's website said that the election had been stolen and that Gavin Newsom had won. And it said that on Monday, the day before the election. Uh, and uh, and that's just an extraordinary statement to make. It is the opposite of get out the vote. It is suppressing your own voters from turning out and voting because uh, you're telling them that the election has already been lost. It's it's monumental political malpractice. Uh, to do that. And uh, and and uh, th th but this is what happens when you have a candidate who I don't think was running for governor. I think it was running to be an influencer. Well, Ron, you know, who's the big winner of California's recall election? I think you're going to tell me what your opinion is on that. The big winner is the political consultants of California who got handed a three hundred million dollar race in an off year. So the, I think I think everyone did all right in the end. Uh, I'm glad that we avoided catastrophe. Ron Nering, thank you very much. Thank you.